My name is Lila Woolwind. I'm both a real estate investor and professional property manager. At one point, I was managing almost a thousand units in two different parts of the state of Ohio. I not only manage hundreds of my own properties, I have managed for about 150 different owners in the past two decades. I have found that most investors fall into three categories. The first group wants to do everything themselves. I have a whole weekend class to help teach them how to maximize the returns on their investments by systemization and automation. The next are sure that they want to hire a property manager so they don't have to take calls about tenants, trash, and toilets. Then there's the third group. These investors may think that they cannot afford a professional property manager or that they will manage on their own until they have enough property to hire a manager. When either of these last two types of investors call me, they never seem to ask the right questions. Sometimes the only question they ask is, what are your fees? New investors, or the ones that have never hired a manager before, frequently do not know what questions to ask about property management. While I can't cover everything in one video, I want to improve your knowledge of some of the things you should think about when talking to a prospective manager. When you have rental properties, you have three options on management. One, do all parts of management yourself. This means you are all parts of the business, the receptionist, the showing person, the maintenance person, the bookkeeper, etc. Two, do part of the management yourself and hire one or more people to do the other parts. Many investors I know either hire a person to show units for them or a maintenance person. Three, hire a third party property manager so you don't have to do any of the management yourself. This is truly being a passive investor. This investor has chosen to let a manager handle the day-to-day -day operations. They focus instead on monitoring current investments and finding new investments. Here are a few of our investors to tell you in their own words why they wanted a property manager. From the time I bought my first few rentals, I knew I needed to have a professional property manager. I immediately hired somebody so I didn't have to waste my time doing showings. I don't have time to go out and fix things, and I definitely don't want to take calls from tenants in the middle of the night. And besides, when you are doing these showings, you're making $10 an hour. When you're swinging a hammer, you're making $10 an hour. If you want to make more than that, you've got to learn how to find better deals. And it's not a matter of learning as much as just going through more and more. You have to spend the time actually running the business working on the business and not working in the business. So I have found that while a lot of my colleagues say, I'll hire a manager when I can afford it, since I hired a manager, I had that time to find far better deals. I used that time to negotiate and it gave me so much more money than they are saving by swinging a hammer or doing their own showings. It was much more profitable in the long run. The sooner you hire a manager, the easier it will be for you to make enough money to pay for them. It's not the other way around. You don't earn enough money with your rentals to hire a manager. When you are buying the rental, you make sure you factor in what it costs to pay the manager. If not, you're just buying yourself a job, not an investment property. Every time I get a new rental and I turn it over to the manager, they find a way, frequently something I would not have thought of, to get it rented faster or to get me more rent. And that more than offsets what I pay them. I think everyone should have a manager. And I know, even if it didn't turn out to be more profitable, the amount of time and energy it saves me that I can reinvest to grow the company by negotiating and finding more deals far supersedes the amount of money I have ever paid any manager. So do what you want to do, but I'm here in Vegas having fun while they're back at home running my properties. Hi, uh, my name is Terry Bay, and I just want to say that I hired Lila and Eric years ago to handle some properties of mine. I bought these two that were just nightmare properties and no, no management company would even talk to me once I told them where they were. But Eric and Lila, they weren't afraid of them one bit. Stepped right in, took them over. I have never had to deal with those properties since. Everything is handled professionally. It changed my life. If I would have known them when I was younger, when I was buying more properties, 
I'd be in a whole different situation right now if I would have met them sooner in my life. So if you're thinking about buying properties and you're not a strong landlord, they're perfect because I let the tenants walk all over me and now I don't talk to any of them. All I do is see a check every month. I use a property manager because I can get more done faster and to manage things because I know that they can do it better than I can to deal with the late night calls and to hire the right people. I hired a property manager to help screen my tenants correctly so I didn't end up with a bad tenant, to help hire the correct repair people so work gets done right and on time, and ultimately to save time so I can spend more with me and my family. If you choose to hire a manager, the first question is, how do you find the right property manager for you? You need to ask questions that help you determine a potential company's setup, systems, and performance. Different management companies are set up differently. Some companies use a property manager-centered approach. These companies have individual agents assigned to the management of your properties. This is convenient because one person can usually answer all of your questions since they're the only person involved with your properties every day. However, if the agent or property manager you are assigned to is not performing to your satisfaction, your investments can suffer. This may happen when they are out of town, if they have a bad day, if they're not properly trained or experienced, or even if they have a personality conflict with you or others. Some companies use the team approach to management. This means there is a team of people involved with your properties. A team focuses on systems that they use on all properties, regardless of ownership. While you usually still have one main contact, they may have to talk to other team members to get some of your questions answered. The benefit of this approach is that each team member can focus on the tasks they are best at. Members that are best at sales can focus on running vacant units. The ones best at accounting can focus on the bookkeeping. And the people who like research can process the applications. Another benefit is, if one person on the team is on vacation, sick, or having problems, the other team members will fill in. This provides a more stable or uniform performance of your properties. Real estate agents have always worked alone. Now, even agents who focus on sales are realizing that a team approach is far more effective. You can see that by all the real estate teams that are popping up across the U.S. and Canada. As of 2018, more than a quarter of the agents were working as part of a real estate team, and those numbers are growing. Many of the investors that call me to discuss management options do not even know these types of management exist. When you interview a prospective management company, you want to know how they handle the management, by agent or by team. It is also important for you to ask how the management company or agent sets rental prices. Do they ask the owner's opinion? Do they go with their own opinion? Or do they have systems and base rental rates on facts? Managers should be doing rent surveys to see what similar units in that area are renting for. They should do a rent survey at least once a year to make sure that every unit stays rented in the best market range. Rents are raised every year that the market allows. This helps to maximize the income from your investments. Some owners are afraid that their tenants will move if they raise the rents. I have found that if you always stay in the correct range, based on all of the other similar units in the area, very few tenants will move. Why would they pay all of the expenses to move to a new house across the street if it's only $5 cheaper? You may also want to know what criteria this company uses for screening prospective renters. No person or company can guarantee that a tenant will be good. However, they should have a good screening system and acceptance criteria aimed to reduce this risk. In fact, if they do not have written acceptance criteria posted, you can get in a lot of trouble with fair housing. You should absolutely have this, even if you only have one rental property. You need a written list of minimum acceptance criteria. All applicants must be held to that standard. This will help you to consistently choose the best residents. A prospective management company should be willing to share their minimum acceptance criteria and go over their screening process with you. If not, there's a problem. You should also ask how they handle maintenance. Do they have in-house repair people or do they use outside companies? When do they just fix something and when do they call you for approval of a repair or replacement? While you don't want to be bothered with every little repair, 
You also don't want to be surprised by a large repair bill at the end of the month. All managers have a way of choosing when they should contact you for permission before completing a repair, so you know what to expect. Also, does the company do routine inspections to look for problems that tenants aren't reporting? A good manager should be inspecting at least once a year for issues that tenants may not notice or report. While there will be a fee for the service, it is worth it to protect your investment. Of course you should ask how the management company is compensated. Understand that there's more to ask about here than just, what is your management fee? Do they charge administration fees, bookkeeping fees, travel fees on top of the management fee? Or are all those items included in their management fee? Some companies charge a very low management fee, but then add other administrative charges that may be more than double what you actually pay. There are logical reasons to charge more for some things. Most owners do not expect managers to buy and install a new water heater for free. Your main goal is to find out exactly what the management fee covers. Then look for extra fees. Almost all companies will have fees for extra tasks, such as inspections, posting notices, waiting on utility companies, etc. They will also have markups on maintenance performed by outside contractors. As all companies set up their fees differently, read a copy of the management contract before choosing a company so you know what to expect here. When interviewing a new management company, one of the most important questions you can ask about is their results. Do they keep statistics? Are they performing well? A really good manager will be tracking their performance and should be able to tell you their stats. You want to find a manager with good performance. While prior performance is not necessarily an indication that future performance will be the same, it tells you if the manager is watching their performance. If they are, they will know when things start to get off track and can correct them quickly. Your new management company should understand what statistics are important. Many investors think that 100% occupied is a good thing. There is the assumption here that this gets you the most money from your investments. What you should strive for is to maximize rental income. If your properties are 100% occupied all of the time, I would be concerned. It is normal for some people to move. If you do not have any vacancies, you may not be getting enough in rent for the units you own. It is easy to have 100% occupancy if your rent is $100 per month lower than all of the competition. A manager in this situation may only lose $10 a month and have way less hassle, but the owner loses $90 every month. I have found that the sweet spot for occupancy is about 95%. A 95% occupancy shows that you have some vacancies from normal moveouts that are filled in a reasonable amount of time, but you are also asking enough in rent to stay within the market range. There are exceptions in really hot markets or for managers that take on large repositioning projects. A reposition is when you buy a complex that starts with a very low or even 0% occupancy. In these situations, I want to know what the average occupancy is of their stabilized properties. If you ask the right questions, you can determine if a management company is right for you. Once you've chosen the correct company, keep an open line of communication with them. You should know and understand what is going on with your properties. Your manager should send you monthly statements so that you can see how your investments are performing. Review these statements when you get them and ask questions about them when needed. To sum this up, you first need to determine how you want to have your properties managed. If you choose to get a professional manager, make sure you ask the correct questions when you are interviewing management companies. This will help you to find the company that will work best for you. After you've hired a management company, you need to communicate with them. Your management company is a vital part of your investment team. A good choice in a management team can make your investments grow faster and also reduce stress in your life. This can make your life much more enjoyable. Thank you for joining me today to learn about hiring a property management company. No matter what you choose to do, manage your investments wisely so you can buy more faster.